finish your vegetables. You're not getting any dessert. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. So, so to your unconscious mind, it takes everything literally. So it goes, if I, get, if I do something I don't like, I'm going to get what I do like. Right. Then we get older and we get programmed more. If a woman breaks up with her boyfriend, what does she do? Tub of ice cream, right? right. What's her birthday without a cake, right? So you're relating certain foods to make you feel better, right? No shit. So it's always salts or sweets. Like right. I, I've never found in all the years I've been doing that somebody gets stressed out and eats broccoli, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's, and that starts from when we're a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're trying to give the reward for yeah, good yeah. behavior. Exactly, right. So you're going to go out like, what's a birthday party? We're going to have a birthday party at McDonald's and all that stuff, right? And then, right. And then the same thing goes and then you get in the, in the teenage years, you start drinking and smoking, and you and you get addicted. It's not really the well. The drug has some addictive things uh, tendencies right. to it, but right. what you're doing, it's the emotion that's addicting you. No <laughs> shit. Hmm. And that's what I address. I address the emotion. Once you get rid of the the emotion driving the behavior, changing the habit is usually not too difficult. Like I mean. Uh, Bear in mind, like if you're drinking, you know, a 26 or every single day, yeah. you're going to have some serious withdrawals. Right. But like smoking, for example, you know, you get rid of the emotion instantly. It feels like you've never smoked. Really? There's no withdrawal, nothing. Wow. Yeah. And I've had it done to me and I've done it to thousands of smokers in the London area. Right. Right. Yeah. Same with. Do any of them, do you make it last for a lifetime? Do you, yeah. Like, can, you know you ever, can you ever lose that? Like, I know you're saying it needs to be another event. Like, what event would trigger someone to start smoking again? Well, I mean, it's not to say that they won't. What I actually find is uh, people will sometimes lose the fear of getting addicted again, and they'll just be out. And, and you know, you may just have oh, just a vulnerable emotion. Like, maybe you'll be out with everybody, and, like, you know, you had a couple of drinks, and the you're like, oh, I just decided just to have one, and then bang, I'm back. Right. right. And that's usually what will happen, but... Because life is not flat. And honestly, the way I see it, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, you either take care of your day-to-day emotions on purpose yeah. or your unconscious mind will, by default, start dealing with them. Everybody's got a cup of emotion they can handle. Once it overflows, you got to start figuring – you need relief somewhere. Right. Biting your nails, eating, smoking, gambling, shopping, something. So if you're not, you know, meditating or doing something just deliberately – you know, exercising, you know, right. meditating, doing something that you're deliberately helping relief your emotions in a way that work mm-hmm. over time, your unconscious mind by default will protect you and do it some way or another. Really? Yeah. That's so wild. You have no choice. You you have to kind of, I'm not saying you have to get to work or anything, but mm-hmm. you know, and usually the ways that we've learned to deal with our emotions as teenagers and kids are not very productive, right? Sure. It's like well, we were never taught how to deal no, with it. No, right? So, so by the time we're old, we don't realize how to deal with it, and right. everything's being thrown at us. So it's like, yay, bud, give me a smoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about um, influence? Like when you're, when you're going through that uh, high school phase and the cool kid offers you a cigarette. Yep. And like... So is that playing? What emotion was that playing on? It's playing like, okay, well, I could be cool, and 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 if I smoke with this guy, then it's yeah, going to well, make me feel good. Or? Well, yeah, well, usually that's strive with acceptance, right? So right. everybody between sure. everybody between the ages of about twelve to about twenty, you know, everybody at different within that time span, they go through a period in their life where, where mom and dad accept- aren't mom and dad are quite as smart as they once were, right? Right. So we're looking for acceptance other places, right. and we usually find it with our surroundings or you know our friends and stuff like that, and that's kind of where you get lured into a lot of that stuff. Acceptance, approval, right? And yeah. Everybody has. Uh, you know, there's everybody has a, a built-in um, valve as well for certain approval because growing up, you know, we need how would you survival. know? How yeah. would you know you were doing right by mom saying yes, and yeah. you knew you're doing it wrong, saying no? But then as you get older, you're looking for other places. When in actuality, it's you're looking it for source, right? Right. Higher source sure. is that approval, but. That's usually a big part of it, right? Interesting. Mm-hmm. And that, is that where it kind of links in with the spirituality again? Again, yeah. You know, yeah. well, I think physical, mental, right? Yeah. And spiritual. All, the, all three the are triangle, needed. Eh? Yeah, all yeah. three are needed, I yep. think. Like, I know, uh, I'll tell you, I, I uh, physical, I've been working out since I was in grade 10. I yep. mean, I'm not like, uh, you know, power lift or anything, but right. I've been working out, taking care of myself. Yeah, sure. Uh, the mental aspect, hypnotherapy, I've been on point. Mm-hmm. And I've I've been good, right? But it wasn't until I turned over to a little bit more of that spiritual aspect as well that right. really gave me that freedom. It was a missing link that I've been missing for a, for a while. That really was right. like, oh wow. So you're saying that some of that finding that spirituality helped you kind of on the path of um, partying less and less, and, and finding having a, a clean, sober mind is kind of yeah. a better place to be. Well, I told you, right? Like yeah. acceptance and approval seeking runs very deep in human beings, and um, you know, when you're when you sober up, what happens? 
you know, you, the, you like I know you, you stay home a lot or you, you're away from everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you, so then, you isolate a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. become isolated. And for me, I, I, that's not good. I don't like isolating too, too much. No. I don't mind spending time alone. I, yeah. I enjoy it, but... You can't I, be afraid of that, yeah, right? You right, can't I, be afraid no, of being I, alone. Oh, no, yeah. I, I, I yeah. live alone, no problem. But, you know, you, you definitely want to be out there a lot. And I found for me what was, was very difficult too is, you know, a lot of my human contact was being at work, right? Right. And so I'm therapeutically dealing with problems all day right right yeah. so it's like yeah. man i need a release somewhere right and without without aligning with source or anything like that i found that it, it was challenging for me right so mm-hmm. and my mind was trying to deal with the stress of other people right my own stress and so i'd bounce back sometimes right, right. so that's kind of where i found where it was just the physical and trying to do it on my own was was a lot more difficult than it is when um you're aligned with source when you're you're calling it source I like that. So let's talk about first for a minute. Um, when people are in that room all day with you and they're bringing up their problems, yep. does that, I mean, we talk about the subconscious mind. So those are going into you somewhere, right? Like yeah. how do you not get affected by that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> digging up a big can of worms here. So, <laughs> okay. So, well, throughout the years, and the reason why is that, you know, like, you know, like a few of my relationships, like you're so detached, right? So right. when I first started doing this, you know, you'd find out the root of people's problems. And I'm talking like serious issues, right? Right. And that would affect me. When right. you show up to work hungover, oh man, your guard's down, look out, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, but now it's come to the point where because I know I'm going to be able to help you, so if somebody's sitting there and they're going through some serious emotion, there's a lot of crying going on, I'm just like, you know. Yeah. Because right. I know I'm going to let it out and be able to help you, right? Right. But, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> it does affect me, I think, more before we start. Because right. pe- people will come in and, I mean, I want to know what's going on. I want to get some information. But I think people mistake me for a psychiatrist, right? right. They want to come in and just dump everything right sure. there. Oh, my God. And I'm, they're just like, time, time out, time yeah, out. Right. So that plays a little bit of a role. <laughs> right. But believe you me, I had to learn real quick how to uh, disassociate myself from it, right? Right. To be there, to understand, but not feel. Right. Because I wasn't going to last very long, right? What good am I if I'm if I'm curled up on the chair beside you? So right? when you said can of worms and relationships, does that mean you disassociate yourself from women well, that you date sometimes? Well, what happens is is that, you know, I, like I've worked very hard to get to a certain point. So right. a, lot of, uh, a lot of things don't really bother me that much anymore, right? Like I'm just kind of like, it's, it's small stuff. Yeah, and yeah. That's, I'm not saying like I'm above it or anything. Right. It's just, yeah, it's just I've just been so used to working with problems and being able to step back and look at it from a bird's eye view that right. it kind of, you know, it seems it seems small for, and minuscule. For, 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 for them, it's, it's different. Big, it's right. different. Yeah. They're like, it's, "Where are you? Right? Yeah. I'm right here." It's, you know, if you're upset and I'm not, it's just you know because yeah. I always I, I learned very quickly. That if you are upset, whether it's somebody I know personally right. or a client, right. and I'm not upset, it doesn't mean I don't care. Right. 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 But for a lot of people, they're like, they if you're to- not crying with me, that means you don't <laughs> care. Right. And I'm like, no, but it's. Yeah. They think you need to mirror what they're doing to yeah. be empathetic. Yeah. 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 And, I'm, and I'm not. Right. Like, right. I'm there. I care, right. but I'm just, you know, I'm sure. cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Are you ever tempted? Um, I mean, I don't know what kind of arguments you've gotten into in relationships. Yeah. But, uh, oh, they're you, there. They're there. They're, right? Of course they are. Yeah, of course I'm human, they are. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when you do get into those and the problem, you see a problem with your, your partner, let's say, because you're probably pretty quick at pinpointing problems at people, right? Yeah. Dealing with them. Yeah. Are you tempted to just sit her down and get rid of it? Well, like, yes and no. It's, it's not always, you don't, I don't always even need to do that. Right. right? I, right. It does not have to, like, you don't have to, I don't, like, I kind of have your eyes open and hypnotize you. I don't need to actually <laughs> put you in that trance to do it. Right. But I, you know, I, I don't. So it's still influence kind of. Yeah, in a way. yeah. 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 It's still, you still persuade and language patterns can still have a strong effect in the way you feel and change. But, right. But I do my best not to do that. Right. I'm, right. I'm, I'm really learning now to, uh, to to see you as perfectly imperfect, right? You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. just, I don't sure. have to change the whole world sure. because it's. I mean, you know, because if I if I see that you have a problem, I think the problem is with me, right? right. It's how I see you. My Absolutely. projection, my Absolutely. projection on you is the problem. Yeah. So if I see that, I need to run and yeah. do my own meditation on yeah. it, not try and fix you. I agree. You know what I mean? When you see something that's bugging you about someone else, like why is that fucking bugging yeah. me? Right? All like, I do is showing working. you who I am, yeah. my projection. So I right. uh, I try to kind of maybe write it down and work on it later. All right. right? So you're in a relationship. 
relationship? I mean, let's talk about all your relationships. Have you ever just been like the arguments going on and on? Have you ever just been like bing, bing, bang, shut the fuck up as you put her to sleep or what? <laughs> no, 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 no. But mind you, I sometimes you know, it's yeah. like you know, you can, right? Yeah. But, but I don't, I don't do that one bit. Never, but, never once used it. No, no, I have. Like they've okay. asked me, if we've worked through stuff, but together. it's been consensual. Yes, okay. yes, I've never. You know, like snapped you in a trance, and you don't even know what's going on. You, no way. Eh? No, I remember. Uh, You've never been like, oh, I could really use a blowjob. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I remember a while ago, I, uh, me and one of my ex girlfriends, we went to the movies, and her, her brothers were, were making fun of her. So you went to the movies with the hypnotist. They said, like, they're like, how was the movie? You come back, and she's like, I don't remember. My hair's messed up. My jaw hurts. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I never. Shirts on backwards. <laughs> yeah, what happened? Yeah. I don't know. What movie did you watch? I don't know. My jaw hurts. Yeah. <laughs> no. well, I've never done that, no. Well, good for, good yeah. for you. I'm glad to hear that. I know you wouldn't, or I yeah. would have brought it up, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, how I'm has, ethical. I'm ethical. You are. Yep. I, and I know you are. Um, what, have you? So you, you have hypnotized? Like, have you ever heard shit come up from the girl that you're hypnotizing that you're in the relationship with that you're like, whoa, like, that's more than I can handle, or? No, because I think, like, I, I've, I've worked with the deepest of issues, and I know that the majority of the people's issues that have happened, you know, at a younger, at a younger it's not, we're not doing it on purpose, right? right. It's circumstances of how we portrayed it right. or perceived it, right. and the things that have happened from family members and other things like that, so yeah. it's fairly, usually, remember, the, uh, what stresses a child out is usually pretty innocent, right? Right. So, and again, I don't really, I don't ever attack the surface stuff, right? So the thing that happened to you last week, unless it's like a major, major thing, mm-hmm. I don't need it, right? Because right. I know there's a route to it. And sure. I know everything is there, there. And remember what, you know, watching mom and dad drive away to work, you know, as a four-year-old child, that's stressful. Sure. That's not, yeah. as an adult, that's nothing. But right. Luck and, you know, so most of those things, it's Those nothing. are the people you depend on for survival. Well, that's that's your I mean. lifeline. Yeah. But like, that's what stresses a four-year-old, a three-year-old out. Right. They don't, they're not stressed out because... They're not making enough money, or they're right. not stressed out because right. their spouse is cheating on them. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, it's all childhood sure. stuff. So, sure. So it's usually not anything super serious, right? It's more survival based. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fear and you know love or abandonment, things like that. Right. Right. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of uh, molestation and things like that go down as well. But you know, do people bury that? Like you hear about um, a yeah. lot of times. Obviously. When it comes to sexual abuse, people yep. don't come forward for, you know, 20 years yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you would be surprised how, uh, you know, the subconscious mind, the unconscious mind, the right. sole, sole purpose is survival, right? Yeah. So if somebody's been molested, let's say, um, th- what will happen is is the subconscious mind will hold, will, will keep you overweight because if, if, it, if it believes that being overweight is unattractive and being unattractive means that won't happen to me again... I'm gonna, I see. It doesn't matter what you do; they'll keep that weight on. Right. So sometimes that has to be addressed in order for the weight to get let go. Right. You understand? So yeah, you, you all the time. Interesting. So yeah. So that how do you handle it when um, something like that? Obviously, you're going to hear that, right? You're going to hear oh, yeah. when you get to the root of the problem. When someone says, "Okay, this is a molestation issue," yeah. How do you how do you get rid of that? Well, yeah. So some of the techniques that I use, so I uncover it. Yeah. Right. So once I uncover it, I'm just like, "Thanks, see you later." Right. Right. Yeah. I have to deal with that kind of stuff. So yeah. this is where advanced hypnotherapy training gets gets uh, get, comes into play. Right. So we start using some very advanced forgiveness therapies, and then being able to is a lot of it shame. They feel shame still. Yeah. Well, they blame they, they're angry at the person who did it. Right. They're yeah. angry how they it fucked their life up, and right. you know they're angry because their relationships haven't worked, and right. then they're angry at themselves, right? right? So there's a whole bunch of different aspects that need to be addressed, right. right? Forgiveness of that person, and remember, people, you know, forgiveness it doesn't mean that you forget what was done to you, right. or it doesn't mean that you condone what the person did. You don't even like the fucking person. You don't have to like the person to forgive them, right? But it allows them to let go of that anger and that guilt and that mm-hmm. regret and that shame, so that they can let go of the weight or move on with their lives, right? How do you say to someone like I'm just thinking about that because how do you say okay I don't like you but I forgive you how do you how do you kind of I tell them exactly what I just told you really and and the unconscious takes everything literally right so it's the emotional mind right so you know when they're in hypnosis I can have them picture that person and they're hallucinating right so the one rule of the mind that we know is that the unconscious does not know the difference between real or imagined right you understand so yeah. if I wake up from a dream somebody chasing me my heart will be pounding I'll be sure yeah, it'll have the absolutely. same effect on my body right so when I have them in the deep state deepest state of hypnosis I can have them hallucinate just like the apple into the or the right. onion right they're right. hallucinating yeah. So you were experiencing them forgiving in that process yeah. so that they get the emotional release. 
Interesting. It's it pretty crazy, man. That is. It gets pretty that is. crazy. When you first started doing uh, hypnotherapy and stuff like that came up, did you ever be like, were you ever like, oh, fuck? Like, oh, yeah. Well, headlights kind of. Oh, like, what, sure. Now? Yeah, yeah. Especially like I told you, like, you know, if you come over, uh, if you're coming to work and you're tired or maybe you're, yeah, I learned really quickly, do not show up to work. Hung over. Or, in any way, because so, my guard is down. When that happens, I'm feeling that, right? right. I'm there. So is there you, anything else besides being hung over that makes your guard weak? Uh, I think it? that's probably the main one for me. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, other uh, that or if you hit, uh, like if you're going to find an emotion or something, somebody. 